The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Spear Life is brought to you by Nowi Worldwide. Dive safety through education. Right now on Spear Life, we're on Anna Maria Island, staying in this place. Look at this elevator. <laughs> Chasing this fish. African Papano! And celebrating this guy's birthday. Hey, hey, yes. What's up? Hey, shark. I want to breathe. I'm having way too much fun. Keeps getting better. I feel so good. I do not want to sit in the rain. Ah, boo. Way too much fun. Are we going to eat good tonight? Look at that big boy. This is I'm here to enjoy myself. I'll go tomorrow. He's a fighter. Pretty sharks on this thing? Good possibility, sure. <laughs> African Papano! Who's done? gonna get the biggest? African <laughs> Papano. <laughs> You're done. Anna Maria, Anna Maria Bow. No wonder it's taking these guys so long to meet me at the house. They are dancing around like they have already shot an African pompano. We are here at the pad. Yeah. This place is insane. Not only do these two look like knuckleheads dancing on the boat, but they actually are knuckleheads because they pulled up to the wrong house. Good job, Kobe. <laughs> you know, someone's sitting up there laughing the <laughs> off, right? We do a lot of traveling, but we usually don't get to stay in an MTV crib like this. Yeah, it's a, this place is awesome, man. It is a beautiful, beautiful house. We are so lucky to be staying here. This house is incredible. House? This place isn't a house. It's a freaking mansion. If you think this house is incredible, you should check out Sean's Valley High Beach Resort on Anna Maria Island. This place is hard to beat, and to make it even better, tomorrow morning we are heading out to spear some fish. We arrived at beautiful Anna Maria Island last night, and are now up bright and early for our first day of spear fishing. We are always excited about the different fish each location has to offer, but on this trip, we definitely have our sights set on one specific kind of fish. Who will get the biggest? African Pompano of the trip. Go ahead and give me my trophy. The African Pompano is a beautiful blue and silver member of the Jack family. African Pompano can weigh 40 pounds and reach sizes of over 40 inches. They are near the top of the list for most game fishermen in the Gulf of Mexico and are a prize catch because they are so elusive and they put up a great fight once on the spear. The African Pompano is one of my bucket list fish and I am really hoping that this trip is where I finally make it happen. Usually I just want to spear a fish, any fish, like seriously, anything. But today it's all about the pompanos, baby. I've actually shot quite a few pompanos in my day. Oh, that's so shocking. Gary's already shot an African pompano. Really? Surprise, surprise. Come on, what hasn't Gary done? I'm Gary, I shot every fish in the ocean. I punched great whites in the face for fun. I've wrestled giant squid. I discovered Atlantis. And I've hung out with Aquaman. I can neither confirm nor deny those statements. All right, guys. Yeah. Last, last trip of the spear life season. Our guide for this trip is our good buddy, Cortland. Cortland is an excellent spear fisherman and has been an underwater cameraman for us in the past. In fact, during our Mississippi oil rig episode, Cortland actually speared a nice African pompano. These fish are real curious. If you travel in a big school, it's crazy when you see them because they're almost invisible because it's like a mirror. It just yeah. looks like a bunch of mirrors coming through the water. The really big ones travel in pairs or solo. If you see one fish swimming by himself or two fish, follow those ones first because those are the big, those are the ones that could be 
this big. I've got two spots to go to. The first one's gonna be in closer, it's the gun smoke rack. And then so the second spot is another 10 miles out there. It's further, but I, again, I've never been there and not shot one. Coming up on Spear Life. Watch out, Corlin. Bro! 300 pounds. Let it rip. Our first dive of the day is a wreck known as the Gunsmoke Wreck. There is a lot of legends about this shipwreck. It apparently resulted from a drug deal gone bad back in 1977. The ship was sunk by the crew that was on it, and rumors have circulated that investigators found crew members who had been shot inside the vessel. No one really knows the true story of the Gunsmoke Wreck, although one of our crew has some history with this wreck. The day it went down, two days later I dove it, all the bags of the from the pot were all laying all over where the Coast Guard has ripped them apart. Yeah, I cut them all apart. Yeah. They just threw the trash in the water. From now on, I'm just going to refer to Gary as the most interesting man in the world. They had taken them all out of the hall and cut them all loose. That's how many years ago, the last time I think I dove it. <laughs> Gary's crazy stories are fun and all, but it is time to get after some African pompano. Although Cortland is starting to sound a little less confident about this dive spot. And let's find this unicorn fish that nobody's ever shot or seen. And oh, listen to him now. We want to. Yeah. Corey's like, I got to. Yeah. Their home runs are always there. It's 100%. Yeah. <laughs> as, soon as, you get, as soon as you get out of here, it's like, well. He's backstroking yeah. us. It's all pressure. You know what they say? You lead the horse to water. You can make him drink. You guys got to bring these fish back to the boat. Find me some drug money down here, boy. Good luck with that. Anyone spot a pompano? No pompano. Cortland just shot a Margate. No pompano, but hey, at least we have dinner. Hey guys, there's a shark down in the wreck. Hey, go, be careful. Yeah, the two times I was trying to get your attention, okay. saw a big cobia. And I saw, see, I tried, I tried to I see saw an AP. I figured, one. did you? Yeah, I saw one big one. Did you? I was trying to I, I swam, get you. I swam that way, and then. Uh, right, well, by the time I got to you, he was gone. He was gone. What's that thing? That's a Margate snapper. They're nice open snapper, Cortland. Dive one was a bust, but our guide Cortland said this next spot almost always delivers. Based on the mixes that we've got today, we've got a hard stop at 132 feet. So. If the fish goes down, tries to pull you down below that, you gotta stay up. If we go down and you hit a thermocline where you hit it and you're like, oh, it just got really cold, then that's the spot. Despite Cortland's hope, there was no APs to be seen. Nice shot, Cortland. Cortland shot a jack to try to get the attention of some of the bigger fish. Well, we definitely attracted the bigger fish, just not the one we was hoping for. Watch out, Cortland. That Goliath gripper is coming in hot. Somebody's hungry. Corlin was lucky to have that grouper snap his line. Otherwise, it would have kept pulling him deeper and deeper. Well, so much for Cortland's slam dunk AP spots. <laughs> Man, that Goliath grouper was cool. <laughs> that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was neat. One did come up, what was he, 300 pounds? Monster. Luckily for Cortland, that grouper broke his line. Now it's time to move on to another location where we will need to be on the lookout for more hungry Goliath groupers. It's a wreck I've wanted to die for years. I've heard about this wreck. You know, obviously not living far from here, just for whatever reason I never dove it. Um, it's been on the it's been on the to-do list. The best wreck, the biggest wreck that there is to dive out here for for a ways. Yeah, years ago when we uh, found it, Charlie Clymer, which was an old boat captain out of Madeira Beach, uh, took us to it, and he liked divers where other commercial fishermen didn't like divers. So he always took us to these neat new spots to go try. He took us down there when he found it. Is, so is he the one that originally found it? Yep. Yep, Charlie really? Climber. Okay, so you knew the guy that found the ship. Yep. Huh? It's starting to become a bit of a theme on our show that whenever we dive a wreck, its history has some connection to our very own Gary Zumwalt. This wreck here, you dove it when it was like it real was fresh. 15. I mean, it, it oh, just yeah. been, it just gone All down. All the hatches were still on it and everything. everything. We were trying to, I, mean, I don't even know what it looks like now. You dove it more than I have, so. The neatest part about this wreck is the bow. And this is known for Goliath grouper. There will be like 15, 500 pound grouper just hanging out on this. The biggest right. ones that are out here. Grouper. They can be aggressive. I've had some bull shark encounters here too. It's always reassuring before a dive when the guide tells you not only are there 15 giant, aggressive, hungry Goliath groupers hiding in the wreck, 
but there's also bull sharks. Just what I need to keep me calm before I dive 100 feet down in the ocean. Thanks, Cortland. And then that's all your eight feet right there. And then the bull sharks are hanging on the side. <laughs> like, man, he could read that good. Now the captain is messing with me too. I'm gonna need to change my wetsuit if you know what I mean. <laughs> Portland, you're crazy. I'm not going in that ship with them giant groupers down there, boy. Toby is on the board. It's always a great feeling when you land your first fish of the trip. Wow, this wreck is huge. There are tons of fish in there. Those grouper are huge. Hogger. Way to go, John. Nice shot, Gary. Two for two, boys. Man, that shit's huge. I thought that ship was huge until John came up with that giant hogfish. I mean, come on! Are you kidding me? Hey, Bro! They're freaking huge! <laughs> Damn! For this area, that is a great hogfish. Probably the biggest one I've ever shot in this part of Florida. That's a big hogger, boy! Look at that, hogger boys. Or, no, see, the, see the camera? Yeah. Door. Yeah, buddy. Come on, man, you got to feel it. Oh, a pretty hog. Oh my God! Kiss him. I think it's safe to say John is pretty happy about his hog. Yes! Oh, look at my pretty hog, boys. Look at him. Look at him. Love him, touch him, rub him. Love and touching and squeezing each other. I mean the fish. Love and touching, squeezing the fish. Not each other. Move on. After a long day of diving, our gear naturally starts to smell pretty bad. It's really important to remove all the bacteria from our equipment to eliminate all the odors. Hey, Co, this is that Oda Van stuff I was telling you about. So anytime we're mixing it, four ounces per five gallons of water. And then we'll start getting all our gear clean and smelling nice. We're going to smell pretty. This stuff is awesome. Kills all the bacteria and gets rid of all the stink and makes it smell good. Some people are surprised to find out that I'm a bit of a clean freak. So I am pumped that we can clean our gear with Odaban. Now I just wish there was some way to make John and Gary smell better. Coming up. Heavy, he's heavy. And John welcomes two visitors into the house. It's our second day in Anna Maria. Today we will not be diving as the forecast is calling for some rough waters. Cleaning fish is on the agenda. Hogger of the day. Right there. He's heavy. He's heavy. You know he ate some ice. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold that bucket. <laughs> Hold that bucket tight. All right. Don't lose your grip. All right. Oh, jeez. I'm assuming you notice who does all the heavy lifting around here. It's got to be 500 pounds of fish right here. Oh yeah, at least. For some reason, Gary always gets to clean the fish, and I don't know why. Oh, that's right, because it's a stinky, dirty job, and I don't want to do it. By the way, we don't let Kobe clean fish because we don't like eating bones. A few miles away is this place, the Seafood Shack. Kobe, our heavy lifter, will be bringing in a bucket of boneless fresh fish that Gary just filleted. The chef will be making us fish tacos. That taco with that sauce on it is the best ta fish taco I've ever had in my life. Well, thank you. If John thought that taco was good, wait until he gets this surprise. Did you? <laughs> Dear Gary, he's 10 years older than me. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! We leave.
leave the Seafood Shack and return to our MTV crib, where I get another surprise. My boys Tuff and Gunner show up to help me celebrate my birthday weekend. brown belts, which is, you know, right at the black belt level. Gary's the full-fledged black belt in cooking. Everyone has their little things in our group. So Gary is good at cooking and spearfishing. John is good at spearfishing and hunting. So what am I good at? Oh, I know. I'm good at peeling potatoes. I'm good at smack talking. I'm good with the ladies. I'm actually good at a lot of things. Hey! Secret sauce. Very good, Gary. Thank you. Very delicious. Yes, sir. Good. As, as usual. You know what else I'm good at? Paying compliments to the chef. Good job, Gary. Thank yeah. <laughs> Coming up, it's our last day and the skies are blue, the beaches are packed, and the boat is back on the water looking for fish and a few other things. Spear life! While we're shooting fish, go we can just spot it out. That's cool. That one's a little pack booger, huh? You just hit the buttons. Uh, Left, right, both straight. At the same time. Hold them both up. That's cool, man. I need one of these in my bathtub. What's up, boys? Your first spear life trip with us. Last couple days, hey, it's been fun. I mean, it stunk that we couldn't die, but it was cool that you know we got to hang out in a nice yeah. house, and you guys got to come down. You know, dad's birthday. Come hang out. Yeah, yeah hang out on, the, on Dad's birthday. Now all you gotta <laughs> do is jump in and see if it's clear down there for us. That's it. <laughs> We're gonna tie your rope to you. We're gonna, We're gonna lower you down. Just hold your breath. Tug the rope when you're ready to come back up. <laughs> yeah, really. This year. <laughs> I thought it was great. John's boys were spending some time with us on the trip. The only concern I had was bad habits they might pick up from Uncle Kobe. And if you know Kobe, then you know what I mean. I don't see no fishies. I told you, hopefully John's kids don't bring that language home to mama. It was our last dive of the day. Corlin went down and came back up with some good news. I would say that Gary should have no problem shooting fish here. Gary? Forget about Gary. What about Kobe? Kobe wants to shoot a fish. Gary and I went one way. Kobe and Corlin went another. A little friendly competition, I guess you could say. One down, boys. There's one for me, John. And another one for me. All right, John. I wonder if Kobe shot one yet. There's a good one, Cortland. You kidding me? Come on. Really? Dang it. This thing's trying to kill me. That one got away. Oh my god. You sorry son of a bee, 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 bee. Uh, Wow. Oh. John's got bragging grab rights. Grab my I had two teenagers there to feed, and luckily for me, Gary also contributed to the Brunson dinner that evening. Thanks for the help, Kobe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at whoa. the look at that. Oh man. Nice. Yeah, you could say I had a good dive. After all, we had extra mouths to feed. Thanks for the help, Kobe. Oh, you guys did good. You guys did real good there. Yeah, nice. Good job, buddy. Thank you. It was me and you, bud. We, I'd say we took care of dinner on, a, on yeah, one dive. Yeah, Man, those are Two, big things. three hogs. I know, look at that slob. Gary and I both had an amazing dive. And more importantly, I got to share this moment with two of my kids. This was a great day for me and one to lock into the memory bank. 
Boom, Boom baby. Boom. Yeah. Good job, boys. Oh, Gary and John. Bring it home to groceries. Why are you rubbing it in? Yeah, I'm just saying, if it was up to you, we'd be starving in China. China. Maybe I didn't shoot any fish because I had other things on my mind, like our afternoon trip to the beach. By the way, if you have kids, you may want to cover their eyes. Have fun? Huh? Yeah, come down. Stay in the big, <laughs> nice house. Went Hang down. with the boys. Went to a strip club. Oh, no, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bucket list. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> oh, we didn't know that. We can take care of that. Don't tell your mom. <laughs> a couple more years. Cut. No, you don't have to wait. Uh, yeah. We got fake mustaches in Idaho. <laughs> fake mustaches. We kept ours. <laughs> yeah. They're from the 80s. Yeah. There's a life that everyone chases. Whatever that is for you, chase it with passion and with the ones you love. I travel these waters with two of my lifelong friends. We are on a journey for adventure, to shoot great fish, yeah, buddy. to find a piece of history that lies on the ocean floor, and to explore the beach towns for the best kept secrets, recipes, and seafood. Sometimes out here, it can be a struggle. But I do all of this with joy in my heart, good friends by my side, and on this trip, I did it with two young men I would give my life for. Be that person, that man, that friend in everything you do. For me, I do all of that while chasing the spear life.